What is going on, ICBA fans? My name is Frosty, aka the Alpha Like and Rock, and welcome back to week one of the ICBA season two. Uh, now, uh, hmm, I, I don't know, I lost track of where I was going with this, but um, uh, this week we play uh, Equa is not funny. I always thought it was equals is not funny because the way it looks, he has a capital I, but it looks like an L. So I always thought it was equals is not equals not funny, but it actually uh, he let me know that it is actually Equa is not funny. So that is the coach who we're going to be battling. We're battling the Worcester Wall Reigns in our first week, and he has uh, a pretty good team, a pretty good counters uh, to a lot of our mods. So his team consists of Megalodios. Automatically big big threat in Megalodios. Uh, Sylveon Conkelder. Conkelder is a definitely big threat. Uh, Superior Galvantula. Uh, Sticky Webs is also a problem. I have identified that already. Porygon 2, Kabutops, Magmortar, X Bloud, Bisharp, which is a big counter to one of my mods, and Gastrodon. Uh, his users are Conkelder, X Bloud, and Magmortar. So uh, with that, looking at his team, uh, the first, the first couple mons I immediately think he's going to bring are Megalodios, I'm uh, sorry, Megalodios, Latios, Megalodios, Conkelder, and Galvantula, because uh, Conkelder counters half my team just because it gets so much in coverage and it hits so hard. Megalodios because it's Megalodios and it can take, uh, it can take half my team easily. Um, and Galvantula because sticky webs become a problem, especially when I start speed, when I start not winning speed wars. So. Um, I outspeed some. I, I outspeed a good chunk of this team with the with the team that I brought, but there are still a few mons that I don't outspeed. By sharp uh, speed ties with uh, one of my mons, so I have to be careful there. Uh, Magmortar outspeeds half of my team just because of speed tiers. Uh, Conkelder just hits really hard, so I can take it. And Lottie else outspeeds the entire team. So uh, with that. We're gonna get into the team. So as always, we are being cheered on by our shiny rock rough alpha. Alpha is always uh, there, uh, there, cheering us on and ready to go. So I don't know why I'm like blinking in half of this right now. So, but um, with that first mon, I knew I was gonna have to bring just because it counters Latias and I, it actually stalls out Latias is Jirachi. So we're bringing Luma. Uh, this is a Spadef set, full Spadef invested. Um, you know what? I did not bring up the calcs, or not the calcs, but the I did not bring up the sets. I thought I had them up, but I did not. So hold on, it might be a little bit of jump here and there, but I don't care. Okay, so let me look at this now. Um, yes. So yes. Okay. So Jirachi, he's got leftover Serene Grace. It's a calm nature with 252 into Spadef, 236 into HP, and 20 in the speed. Why did I have 20 in the speed? I think I was supposed to put 20 into defense, and I think I just forgot to change it out. But I got 20 into speed, I, or I put it there to outspeed something. I don't remember. I, don't, I really don't remember why I have 20 speed, uh, 20 speed EVs. I think, I think it's, I think I wanted to outspeed something, but I don't know why. But uh, its moves are Wish, Protect, Toxic, Stealth Walk. So there is no attacking move on this set. Uh, it is mainly there to pretty much Wish, Protect, Toxic, Stall out and get the rocks up. The one thing I've noticed about his team is that he only has two ways of getting rocks away from the board. And that is Megalodios. If he runs Defog, Megalodios, and Kabutops, which I don't see him bringing because he knows I have a lot that can counter that. Uh, Kabutops, especially with... Uh, me having a buzz wall. I definitely don't see him bringing that for that reason right there as he would just get absolutely obliterated by buzz wall. So um, with that, it's pretty much a, a full defensive set. This set, this thing is meant to switch into Latios. Uh, the calcs tell me that if he is timid, max attack, or sorry, max special attack, timid nature, he only does about 32 to 39 percent. So it's so I can easily switch in, I can easily get along with this, even if he has flamethrower, it does the same amount <clears throat> because it's not stab. So, uh, and plus, I resist both of his stabs, uh, including I quad, I quad resist his psychic and I then resist the dragon pulse should he have it. Plus, this thing can easily switch into Draco Meteors. So uh, it's easy if he if he does bring Draco Meteor Latios. The only thing I am worried about is set up Calm Mind Latios. So I definitely have to play careful with that, and that's why Toxic is on this set. So so that way, uh, even if he were to stall me out or try, you know try to get Calm Minds and break me, uh, I wouldn't have to worry about that because 
uh, because Toxic will wear it down. So, uh, Wish Protect Toxic and Stealth Rocks on that. Like I said, he does not have anything. The whole point of this is to get Stealth Rocks up on the board as fast as I can to do the chip damage because next I am bringing Tootsie Pop. <laughs> So Tootsie Pop here is rocking Wish Protect, Knock Off, and Dragon Tail. I went with a double Wish Core, a defensive core. This is fully physically defensive, full HP invested, full physically defensively invested, and and then it has but it has four and spadef. So I'm not gonna win any speed wars. I'm not trying to win any speed wars. I made it oblivious just in case. Uh, actually, I don't know why I wouldn't make it oblivious. He doesn't have a sand. He doesn't have a sand team or some sort of weather core. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, so Oblivious will allow me to get wishes off and to guarantee that they go off. So uh, good thing about the team is that with the double wish core, I can really pass the big wishes around and I can keep my team healed up and I, I can go toe to toe with his team and then chip him down using rocks and toxic and other things. Uh, I also wanted knock off because I had a feeling that this thing is going to uh, is going to bring in um, Porygon 2 because he doesn't have many defensive walls and Porygon 2 is as a big defensive wall So I'm thinking if he brings that in I can knock off his Eviolite and then that that Porygon 2 is now Not as bulky as it should be so uh, Dragon Tail is just kind of to shuffle up the lineup because I do know if he does bring Conkelder Conkelder is a huge uh, Counter to this thing so Dragon Tail is there so that way if he does switch a Conkelder in and I go for Dragon Tail I can immediately get it out. It'll take so hopefully rocks are up. It'll take rocks damage plus it'll take Dragon Tail damage plus uh, I get the free switch out so I'm happy with that. <laughs> Next we're bringing is one of our semi-win cons, and that is going to be Evangelion. This is a uh, nasty plot air slash heal bell set. It is full speed invested only because I need it. I don't know if he's going to fully speed invest that. Um, by sharp, should he bring it? I don't see a reason why he wouldn't bring by sharp. Uh, because uh, he's gonna need a stealth rock setter and there are only I think two mons on his team that set up stealth rocks Yes, there's only two mons on his team that set that set stealth rock hazards That's one is by sharp the other is kabutops I definitely don't see him bringing kabutops But I definitely see him bringing by sharp because I'm pretty sure he knows I'm gonna be bringing uh, I'm pretty sure he believes I'm gonna be bringing this Jirachi So this this counters out my Jirachi and forces the switch real quick, especially since I'm a spadef set so uh, and and then his other his other hazard setter is sticky web so i don't have to worry about spikes i don't have to worry about any of that so um like i said i have 252 in speed tim in nature 252 in special attack 4 in hp just to get it at an odd number uh, it should be at 161 at level 50 um and then um yeah so air slash heal bell Nasty plot roost, so there is no stalling the set out with toxics. There is no worries about that. The only thing I do, I can't do, is I cannot try a speed tide war with um, with by sharp because if by sharp wins, he immediately kills Evangelion. So I definitely need Evangelion around because it's a big part of the team. So next, uh, what we're bringing is my second second win con, uh, which is going to be. Charizard, Dragon Sword, Dragon Sword is coming. It's a Dragon Dance variant with Dragon Claw, Flare Blitz, and Roost. Um, it is jolly. It has 124 speed because after plus one speed, I will outspeed that Latios guaranteed all day, every day. 252 invested in the attack, 72 invested in Spadef, and 60 invested in the HPs. Um, with this, this thing is meant to pretty much set up on mons like Porygon 2. Um, it will also be allowed to set up on mons like by sharp so if I get it in on by sharp I can easily get a plus one dragon dance because I don't I one I don't see him ever leaving a by sharp in unless he's sacking it at like zero HP which would be kind of stupid I mean or not stupid uh, it would be kind of good you know at that point it would be stupid of me not to go for the kill because how the hell would I do that? What the hell, why the hell would I not do that? But also, I am pretty sure it's going to have Sucker Punch, and it could have Life Orb, so Life Orb Sucker Punch could do quite a bit of damage to put me in range of something else. So it'll really just depend on the positioning and with the buy shirt, but I don't see him staying in, but it would allow me to get a free Dragon Dance off, because if he does go for a Sucker Punch and I go for Dragon Dance, I'm not going to take any damage. On top of that, I'm going to get to plus one, and that's uh, I could potentially get to plus two, and then at plus two, I pretty much sweep up the entire team, because there's nothing that's faster. Uh, and the fastest one on this team it can't be scarfed with the Latios unless he brings a uh, scarfed scarfed HP ground 
Galvantula, but even then I have enough spadef to survive one attack from that, so I'm not I'm not worried about that. So uh like I said, my second win con is Dragon Zord. Um good set, just with tough claws, he's gonna hit like a fucking truck. So I don't have to worry too much about that. Uh Next, we're bringing in, since we're bringing Dragazor, we had to bring our Rapid Spinner. So as it is, we're bringing Ice Chips. We're bringing the Cryogonal. Uh, Cryogonal, this is a Choice Scarf. Timid said, uh, this is basically just enough speed to outspeed that Latios. Uh, oh, no, 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 it's not. I'm sorry. It's just enough speed so that way if I get knocked off or I lose my Scarf, I'm still faster than most of his team except for Latios. Like, his three fastest Mons are still faster than me. So, uh, this is the fastest Mon I have on my team, and his three fastest Mons are Gavantula, Superior, and Megalodios, and they all outspeed me anyway. So, the only thing I had to do was make sure I was faster than Magmortar, and guarantee that I was faster than that. So, I have Freeze, Dry, Rapid Spin, and Hidden Power Flying. Yeah. Yeah, no, I have Hidden Power Flying, just in case, um... I need to get, just in case Freeze Dry doesn't do enough damage, Hidden Power Flying should be able to pick up the KO onto Conkeller, but that is also, uh, n I would have to know that it doesn't have Mock Punch, so that's a definite thing I have to scout for, so I have to scout for the Mock Punch, so. Uh, with this, this is my Rapid Spinner, is to keep rocks off my side of the field, so that way uh, Dragon Zord can do his work and all of that, so. And then lastly, for our last Mon, we're bringing in somebody that I needed to be able to switch into uh, for things like Conkelder and things like Bisherp. And the biggest counter, the biggest switch I can have for that is the Tick. Buzzwool is coming to the first one. So this is an Assault Vest variant. Uh, it is 188 speed, uh, which outspeeds everything except for his level, his uh, 80 speed tier, uh, what is it, Bisherp. Uh, but it also uh, can, it can two, it can two hit KO the Bisharp with Leaf Leech, and it one-hit KOs with Hammer Arm. So Hammer Arm does quite a bit of damage. Poison Jab is there in case he brings that Sylveon. This thing will one-shot Sylveon uh, with Poison Jab. And then Counter is if he brings Fire Punch uh, Conkildur, because Fire Punch Conkildur still does quite a bit of damage, even though it's physical, and I have a high physical stat, or high physical defense, it will still, uh, it will still do a good, like, 30-40% to me. Uh, so I had to bring had to bring counter so that way if i if i know he's gonna do it if i know he's gonna bring you know if i know he's gonna hit me with a fire punch then i can bring this thing in counter it and then i can deal massive damage and put it within range uh because i will outspeed on keller on the next turn and i could probably kill it with a hammer arm or i can kill it with a leech life so i'm hoping to put it you know get it from 100 maybe it hits me does about 50 some odd percent that's 90 damage you know um you know, because I should have 182, so let's say it does like 90 damage, I'm going to do double that on the turn back, so it's going to do 188, so which should put it well within range of a leech life, so the only thing he could truly, truly do is just mock punch me to put me in range of something, and with leaf light, I'm going to get probably most of that mock punch damage back, so. With the assault vest, the great thing about the assault vest is I have enough uh, spadef, in, uh, spadef investments, I have 132 that I can survive a psychic. Uh, or hidden power flying from that Latios, and Leech Life will one hit KO that unless it's full physically defensive, bold nature. I'm talking the works on this, so um, so this should be able to this should be able to uh, take one hit from Latios. Should I need it to take a hit from Latios? Should I not have a switch in? Should I lose Jorachi and not have my switch ins to it? But uh, the take is kind of like my wall breaker, or at least something to wear down the team to get it so that way even Gillian or Dragonzor can sweep up the game at the end. So uh, with that, that is the team. Uh, again, we're bringing the Tick, Ice Chips, Dragonzord, Evangelion, Tootsie Pop, and Luma. So, uh, We'll go into the next, we'll go into the battle and we'll see how we did, okay? All right, guys, we're back. So, um, now with this battle, um, I had to actually speed it up because it was very long. This battle was very, very long. Actually, this battle went to time. So it's going to be a very, very long battle, uh, very drawn out. So, uh, so I shortened the video a little bit. See, so it's going to be very fast, very quick, uh, especially just because it went to time. It went 74 turns. But as you can see on his team, he brought Bisharp, Magmortar, Conkelder, Gastrodon, Porygon 2, and Megalodios. So uh, with that, I was able to get, guess most of the team. The Magmortar and the Gastrodon were a little bit kind of iffies. I didn't think he'd actually bring that. So those were a little bit of shock and awe, uh, especially now because that puts all that puts two of the three of his um, 
Z users on the board, so I'm unfortunate certain whether he's going to have it. I doubt the Gun is going to have it because I definitely see him having an Assault Vest. But he could have it. He could have like Z, uh, Z Ice Punch or maybe Z Earthquake. Maybe Z Drain Punch. I don't know what he could have, so. Uh, Porygon's there, so I definitely need to, I definitely needed to make sure that I get the Eevee Light knocked off, and Gastrodon was something I didn't plan for, but I'm just gonna have to deal with. I think of one of them, I had a plan for it. I think of one of my, in one of my team builds, I had a plan for it, which was to bring, uh, Unani and have it have, um, uh, Giga Drain, so, uh, but I ended up not going with Unagi. Uh, looking at it now, I kinda wish I had Unagi, cause, uh, the way the battle played out, I really could've actually used Unagi. Uh, I really could have used him, actually. I really, really could have used him. But <clears throat> it is what it is. So uh, let's get into the battle. Let's do this. Uh, like I said, it's going to be fast. I'm going to try and pause when I can. So uh, we start off the battle. My initial thing is to start off with uh, leading off with Jirachi just because it is a safe switch in, uh, except for he leads with Bisharp, which I was hoping that he wasn't going to lead with. So here I'm worried. Why? Because this could be pursued. And so at this point, I'm like, great, if he has Pursuit, I potentially lose Jirachi turn one. So at this point, I have to take that chance. I can't, you know, I can't go for the attack. Uh, I don't have an attack anyways. This thing walls me just because I don't have anything. So I decide I'm going to switch out and I'm going to go into uh, the Tick because the Tick will scare this out. Luckily enough, he does not have, uh, he didn't show Pursuit there, which was good. He actually just goes for Stealth Rocks, which is fine. So here I know he's scared out, so I'm just going to go for the Leech Life just because it's the safe neutral move. He goes into Gastrodon, it's a very smart move on his part, it's resisted. Uh, looking at this damage that he takes, this is fully physically def physically defensively invested uh, Gastrodon. Because if that was Spadef, that would have done 36%. It would have done 36 instead of doing the 20, instead of doing the... 29 30 percent that it did so it would have done an extra like nine percent so i now know that this is a full physically invested um physically defensively invested gastrodon so i definitely need to make sure that i do not get burned because i did not bring facade i like one of the other builds i had had facade on this thing just in case i get burned or some sort of thing so i'd have to play it safe so i just decide i'm gonna bring him back i'm gonna go into dragon zord now here's where I make my first mistake was to switch Dragazord in. Uh, I mean, I was kind of thinking maybe he might go for, you know, because if he goes for Scold, he's going to do a lot of damage just because I'm not a dragon yet. Uh, plus I'm at Half-Life. And then here's where I make the biggest mistake of the match. I stand on a Gastrodon and I don't even attack it. I just go for Dragon S. Now, it's, I'm sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for this. Now. I go for Dragon Hits. Immediately after clicking the move, I, I realized what was going on. And I was like, oh my god, I just sacked Charizard for no reason. I know this thing has Earth Power. I don't know why. I didn't think of it. I don't know why my stupid hand clicked the Dragon Dance button. Because this is not a mod I can set up on. I don't know why I did it. There's no answer other than I'm just absolutely dumb. And you know what? I deserve to pay for that, which I do right here with this Earth Power. So I lose, I lose Dragazord turn four. So I stupidly lose it. So here I bring in Ice Chips. I know he's going to get scared out because I know he's going to think I'm going to have the freeze dry. So he does actually get out, which is good for me because I figured he'd go into Conkelter or something. So I just go for the Rapid Spin to get rid of the rocks, which is good for me. Plus, I do a little bit of Chimp. I'm getting out anyway, so it doesn't matter. So here, I go into the tick, just to kind of scout and see what this thing wants to do. Uh, he goes for the Earthquake, which is fine by me, because I resist it all day, every day. Uh, looking at the damage, he is a Adamant Nature with full investments, because that did right about what it should do. Uh, so here, I just go for another Life Leech. There's no point not to. It's still the, you know, this will get my HP back to what it should be. It'll get me right back at full. Even if Conkelder stayed in, it does more damage. I can then counter it. I can counter his Drain Punches. I can scout for the, f I can scout for the Fire Punch. Uh, so here I switch into Luma. Not really the greatest of ideas, considering I just saw Earth Power, but I didn't really have anything else to switch in. Besides, an Earth Power only does about 38% anyways, so I can easily wish and toxic this thing up, which is definitely what I want to do, because I want it out of the way. I don't want it in here anymore. So I go for the safe toxic, but he... Uh, no, no, no. I go for the Stealth Rocks. I'm sorry. I go for Stealth Rocks this turn, which he brings in Porygon too. Maybe he thought I was an attack version. So here, I uh, here by knowing and getting the, the download, which was kind of weird, because I really thought he was going to bring... Uh, Trace. Trace would have, I felt, would have been a better move, but maybe he thought he was going to get, 
you know, a little bit more buff by getting a plus one. Uh, so here, actually, I go for the Toxic trying to get it on Porygon 2, but he switches in. This thing was a very good thing for him. Um, so here, I know I gotta get out. I gotta get into something else. Uh, I don't... I'm expecting the rocks, maybe, so I just switch into the Tick to scare this thing out, but he actually goes for knockoff, which is fine, because I lose the Assault Vest, and now I cannot take a hit. Uh, but I also learned that he's Life Orbed, which is good for me, because now he is going to wear himself down by attacking into me. Uh, here, I'm just gonna go again for... The leech life, I'm going to get my HP back. Um, so, and I actually do quite, I actually high rolled that, which is good for me. Now, here's, th here's the thing. Looking at where he stops, that HP is right around 48, 47 to 48%. Hammer arm has a chance to KO this thing. Physically, full physically invested, this thing has a chance to kill with hammer arm. The problem is, is if I don't kill it with hammer arm and he goes for scold, I chance taking a lot of damage for no reason and I chance getting burnt, which then makes the tick useless. So as it is, I have no choice but that I'm gonna have to switch out. I can't take a chance of losing the tick because I need him to scare out other things. So I, I go for, I go into Titsy Pop, which is fine by me because I can easily eat a Scold and if I get burned, it's just gonna negate my leftovers, doesn't matter to me. So here I am gonna go for a Dragon Tail because I don't see a reason why not. Actually, he makes a good thing and he brings in Kelder, which is fine by me because it's gonna take the 12% to rocks, but I'm also gonna get this Dragon Tail. I'm gonna do damage to it, I'm gonna get it out and it's gonna take another 12%. Something else is gonna come in, which is good for me because it's Mag Mortar. Looking at it, I uh, I looked up before and I did notice that it did have uh, Focus Blast, so I switched in Evangelion. Uh, later, I did look and see after this that he did get Thunderbolt, so I had to scout for the Thunderbolt, but I wanted to get a Air Slash off. Plus, I wanted to see if he was fully invested in speed to outspeed me. Uh, he is, so that, that was good information to know. So here, I'm just like, okay, I can't lose Evangelion, especially since I just lost Charizard, and this is basically my win con for the remainder of the match. Uh, I need this thing and I really need it. So I decided I'm gonna switch out and I'm gonna go into Jirachi. If he goes for the flamethrower, if he goes for the fire blast, he's got me and there's not much else I can do. Maybe I can get a toxic on, but he actually switches out and goes into Bicep. That's fine by me because I get rocks damage. I'm now, every no, you gotta you gotta understand, every time I switch out uh, Luma on this by sharp I am fearing for that pursuit it's only about halfway through the match that I realize he doesn't actually have it which is good for me because um, I'm like okay he, he's got to have it but I, all so far all I've seen is he has knockoff and stealth rocks but I also have to know he has to have iron head for uh, Evangelion so there's three moves so, but I don't know what his fourth move is it's either sucker punch or pursuit Looking at it, if he was pursued, he would have used it already. He would have used it turn one to gimp out my Jirachi. That's what I would have done if I had pursuit. I would have used it the first turn pursuit and just gimp out Jirachi, if not possibly even just KO it straight outright, which is good for me. So without seeing it for the first couple of times, I have to assume this thing has Sucker Punch. So as it is, I have nothing that's going to trigger that Sucker Punch. I also have nothing that's going to hit this thing either. So um, so as it is, I just switch out. My switch in every time is to switch into the tank. Knockoff will do nothing to me. It will also switch it out. But now he's starting to play these games where he switches out a lot. And this is where... This is where the match kind of threw me for a loop because I had calmed myself at this moment and I start seeing him just kind of switching in and out and in and out and in and out. And at this point, I'm just like, okay, he's trying to keep me guessing. So I need to get him to play my game. So at this point, I have no I have no problem bringing Tootsie Pop in because why? I could easily eat a Psychic. Easily. And you know what I can do? I can Dragon Tail this thing out. So looking at it, I'm thinking he might go for a recover, but no, he switches, which makes me think at this moment, the reason why I think this now is that I think... The reason he switches at, the, at that moment is that he does not have a recover move. He does not have a setup move, he does not have a recover move, which means, to me, I believe he has four attacking moves. So, at that point, I'm like, okay, he must be full attack invested. Now, the thing becomes is whether that was modest or it was timid. Looking at it, it could be timid, it could have been a high roll, but in my mind, I'm believing that he is full modest, full specially invested with that. So. Uh, looking at it, I see Psychic, and I see I see Psychic, so I have to assume it has uh, Dragon Pulse or Draco Meteor. It might have Ice Beam or Thunderbolt for uh, for Togekiss. Should I? Or and 
its last move, I'm assuming it has Shadow Ball for Jirachi. So, so if it is a four attack set, those are the four attacking moves I'm assuming that it has. But he actually switches it. Uh, so when he switches out and goes back into Conkelter, which is fine by me, I was going to protect to get my leftovers anyways. Now I am forced to get out because I don't, I cannot take it. I cannot take a Drain Punch from this thing. I am assuming it's coming, so I'm going into Evangelion because I can easily eat a Drain Punch. But he actually switches out and goes into Latios here. I cannot eat anything. I am, I'm wearing this Latios down with rocks, which is very good for me. But I'm also getting, uh, I got a little bit of leftovers recovery. I can't take a hit from this thing. I can't take a Psychic. So my idea is to switch into Jirachi, which I think I do. Yeah, because I think I switch into Jirachi. So, uh, and then he downloads the attack. So he now knows that this is a attack version of, or he should know that it's an attack version of that so i go into this he goes into by sharp which makes me think that this is his dedicated switch in he probably thinks that i have nothing this is the first time in the match that i reveal wish so he now knows that i am a full spadef version with wish and protect so here i just decided to go into tits pop there's no poison not to uh luckily here he goes for stealth rock so i'm gonna get a free wish pass over to this i was gonna eat it anyways even the knockoff i was gonna eat so i was gonna easily eat whatever this by sharp wanted to do and now i am free to just go for these dragon tails again to shuffle up his lineup and to get the chip damage I want, which is nice because I'm whittling down this Conkelder, which is definitely a big threat, and I actually draw out the Bi Sharp again, which is very nice because it's going to take damage. So here I have no choice. I have, or I don't have a choice, but I, I just don't care. And I'm just like Dragon Tail, Dragon Tail. He's going to take, you know, even if he goes for an attacking move like he did, he's going to take uh, life orb damage. Plus, I'm going to be able to get a Dragon Tail damage off. Plus, he's taking rocks. Plus, he has to re enter next time he brings it back in. So, little by little by little, I am chipping this team down, which is definitely what I wanted with this team. It was going to take a little while to get this match done, but luckily, I bring out McMortar and I'm like, oh, good, McMortar's dead. No, it survives. I'm like, great. What do I do? So, here I thought I was going to switch into something, uh, but here I just went for Wish. So, he goes for Thunderbolt, which uh, I thought he was actually going to go for the. I thought he was going to go for the, the, oh, what is it? I thought he was going to go for the Focus Blast, but he didn't. So luckily I get another Wish off. Uh, I get Tootsie Pop back up to a decent HP. I have to switch out here. Uh, I go into the tank. There's no point not to. I'm going to take some rocks damage at this, but I am going to be able to eat this Drain Punch. Uh, so he doesn't do, he doesn't do that much, but he still recovers a little bit, which kind of sucks because he's now recovered enough to eat that entry of rocks. So here, he I don't think he wants to take too much. He wants to go into the Gastron because Gastron is pretty much his switch into this every time. Uh, me, I'm just going to go for Leech Light because I want to get my HP back. And if I crit, I put this thing into um, range of a hammer arm, which is good for me. So uh, here, like I said, I can't get burned. I don't want to get burned, so I switch out. Uh, I switch into ice chips because ice chips will allow me to, uh, it will allow me to, oh, what is it, to spin, uh, but he goes for toxic, so I guess he was trying to toxic down my, um, my mon, which would have been good because I guess I could have stayed in and I could have got another attack off and I would have definitely put him in within range of a hammer arm, but it is what it is. I didn't think he'd stay in to begin with. He, he had been doing a lot of those switches. So here I just go for the rapid spin. He hasn't really seen me do anything other than rapid spin. So I don't know if he knows that I was scarfed. Because um, he knows it's fast. But I don't think he, he knows that it's scarfed. So here I go into Evangelion. There's no point not to. Uh, I am assuming that he's going to go for a Drain Punch. But he actually switches out and goes into the Latios. Uh, which sucks for me because now, uh, while I am getting these nice HP recoveries, I still cannot take a Psychic from this range. And I can't take a Thunderbolt, especially if he has Thunderbolt or Ice Beam. They both do about 90%, so I can't take it. So I have to switch into Luma here. Uh, so he does here reveal Thunderbolt. So he did have something for that. So I'm actually very glad I got out and didn't chance him having it. So here I'm just like, okay, I don't know what he's going to have, but I need to get a Wish off. Uh, so I believe I go for a Wish here. And I need to get it passed into something. So I believe here... I don't remember what I go for. I don't remember what I switch into. I switch into Tootsie Pop because I can easily eat this and I can start Dragon Tailing again. Uh, here he goes for the third set of rocks because I've spun them away twice already. So. so this is the third set of rocks. Here he just goes for the Iron Head, just wants to do damage. But I'm okay with that because I'm going to Dragon Tail and I am going to let him kill himself to Life Orb to put him within range of something else. Luckily, we get we get Magmortar dragged down, and we actually pick up our first KO of the match, and that would be on the Magmortar. So Jirachi picks up the first KO for the team. 
and so uh, he brings this Porygon in. Uh, I'm assuming it has Toxic, or you know, I was assuming it had Toxic or Thunder Wave or something like that. So here I just decide, I believe I go for a Wish, just because I want to Wish Pass into something. Now I know with two of my mom's poisoned, I need to get into, um, I need to get into Evangelion, and that is going to be, I'm going to Wish Pass this into Evangelion. And luckily enough, he brings in Conkelder. I don't think he thought I was going to bring in Evangelion. He probably thought I was going to bring in something else. But uh, luckily enough, I take the rocks damage and I'm able to easily get back up to full HP, which is nice because now I get a free attack off, which I am fully okay with. And I attack this Porygon too. He gets downloaded, which he just gets the attack raise, which is fine by me because he doesn't have any sort of physical attack. Uh, looking at that damage, it is going to be a long time to pull this Porygon 2 down just because of the EV light. So I decide now is the time I'm going to set up and I'm going to take my chances and I'm going to get to plus two. Plus two should do quite a bit of damage. So I'm going to get this token get set up so that way he can get ready to possibly even sweep up the game. Uh, I know I need to be at full HP to take on that Latios, so I cannot take it with anything less than that so here i just go for air slash to kind of scout the damage it does close to about 48 percent uh but i also get the flinch i'm looking to hopefully get another flinch uh but he now gets toxic off now with three mons toxic i have to heal bell this turn to get the toxics off um normally i would i would wait a little bit longer but i can't afford to do that i know he's gonna go for the recover here because he has to uh and it would be bad for me not to go for the heal bell so I'm going to reveal the heal bell and I'm going to show him that no, he's not going to get a chance. Uh, here I know I if, I if I try to rely on flinches, it might not happen. So here I just decide I need to set up the plus four. Plus four sweeps through everything on his team. So at plus four, I'm going to be able to do a lot of damage. Uh, here he reveals Ice Beam, which sucks because now I take a lot of damage and I need to be at full HP. So uh, uh, here... I think I'm like, okay, I'll just go for the air slash. I'll try to get the flinch. Uh, I should be able to KO it. Nope, he lives on one. And he gets the second ice beam. So I didn't even get the flinch and I didn't get the KO. So here I'm at 37. I'm like, okay, I have I have to do this. I have to I have to roost back up. So I'm going to reveal roost on this turn. And I'm going to roost myself. And I'm going to take the ice beam, which should do less because I lose my flying typing. So I'm, it's not going to be super effective. Uh, but... I'm still pretty low, so I definitely want to get another one off to get back up to full HP, so that way with my leftovers, I'm going to be sitting in a very good spot for if that Latios comes in, or if anything else comes in. Uh, he goes for the Ice Beam, and then this happens. Yeah. Frozen. He didn't, he didn't trace that. He got a natural freeze. So at this point in the match... I'm like, okay, I have everything, I can do it, I can take this thing on, I'm sitting in a good position, Thunderbolt will do 90%, but once I get my leftovers recoveries and I take this thing out, I should easily be able to eat one lightning bolt to save myself and be able to get an air slash off and kill that Latios. After that, he has nothing other than maybe a mock punch, and that's iffy, that's like he's got to get me down to like one or two, maybe even twelve, like to within like four or five percent to get me down but with my six percent recoveries i'm still going to be looking pretty golden but this freeze changes everything because this freeze happened i can no longer kill this Porygon too because i'm frozen so i'm sitting there going great this is absolute garbage i can't believe this i get one flinch on what four air slashes so it's not like i was hacking him to death no i i was going for air slash because it was the strongest move i had um and I, you know, maybe I was kind of hoping for a little bit of Serene Grace luck, but knowing my RNG, I wasn't banking on it. I was just kind of going for some damage. But he gets this freeze, and this freeze is absolutely huge. It is absolutely huge. So with that, I'm just like, great. I There's nothing I can do. I just got to sit here and recover. Or, you know, I got to sit here and I just got to spam air, air slash. Hopefully, um, this is the thing. This is the thing. He brings in the bite sharp. With me being frozen, if I thaw out this turn and I hit Air Slash, this Bisharp is dead. This Bisharp does not survive a plus four. There's not, I mean, he doesn't survive at a full health. Even though it's resisted, he still doesn't survive it. It's stab, plus I do a crap ton of damage to it. At this range, there's no way he survives it. But I'm frozen solid. I can't do anything. So now I have to get out because, like I said, I can't, I can't win the speed tie war, so I have to get out. And that sucks because I pretty much could have taken this match right here and right now had I not been frozen. So uh, with this, this just draws it out even longer. He goes for the Iron Head here, which does quite a bit of damage. So here I just go for the 
I'm sorry. Here I go for uh, Life Leech just to kind of end him because it does 50%. He was within range way before that. Uh, but here he actually does reveal the Sucker Punch. I really thought it was Pursuit. So now I know, I know I saw his entire move said it was Sucker Punch, Pursuit. I'm sorry. It was Sucker Punch, Iron Head, um, Knock Off, and Stealth Rocks. So with that, I'm really kind of glad he didn't bring Pursuit because Pursuit would have really just made this a lot more difficult. Uh, but he does put me in within decent range. Uh, and he puts his life down so that way I'm not going to recover quite a bit. So uh, with that, I'm only going to get 3 HP back. But luckily enough... It takes 22 to enter in on rocks, so I am going to get the boost. The tick is going to pick up a KO, but now he brings out Latios, and there's nothing I can do with this. I need to, I mean, it does take rocks damage, but I can still use the tick for something else. So I switch into Luma. This is where he reveals the Shadow Balls, which I was pretty much sure he had. So, so far, his moves are Psychic, Shadow Ball, and, that, and with that damage, I am assuming right now that that is modest damage, but actually, come to find out, he was Timid Nature, and that was just a high roll, so... So here I went, I go for this because I can't guarantee that I would survive it. So I have to protect in order to get the leftovers recovery in order to guarantee my survival on the next turn. So, so with that, I go for the wish. Um, I need to, I need, I pretty much need to, to hope I can get something going here because I'm, 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 I'm losing steam quickly because of that freeze, uh, and I'm trying to keep my mon alive at this point in time. It's all coming down to wish stall and possibly, uh, toxic stalling this thing out. But if I toxic it, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get, you know, all sorts of in trouble, uh, here I'm expecting a drain punch. Uh, so it doesn't, he doesn't recover all that much. Maybe like. I don't know, 10 HP, but I'm really kind of hoping for an air slash to come through and I'm hoping to get unfrozen, um, but we're still frozen solid. So right now I know I'm going to lose my biggest win con, my last win con that I have because I am assuming and it shows poison jab, which I was assuming it had anyways. So, so far, all I've seen on this thing are drain punch, earthquake, and poison jab. So at this point, I'm not sure he has the mock punch. I don't think he has it. And at this point, I'm like, okay, if he doesn't have the mock punch, I can survive this. But no, he actually does have the mock punch. So, uh, very good prep on his part. So he did bring mock punch, which does suck. So here I just have to bring in Luma. I pretty much just gotta hope for something. I gotta hope for something. So there's there's not much I can do. So I just have to try to toxic stall this thing out. I, at this point, I am pretty much assuming because of that freeze, I'm going to lose. And it is going to be a three or four. Oh, he gets a crap ton of HP back. And I'm like, great. This gun killer just became a huge, huge pain in the ass. I don't know if I can do it. The only thing I could pretty much do now is pretty much protect stall the toxic out. But then I still don't have an answer for Latios. Uh, he goes for the Drain Punch, so he's going to take 12% on this next turn. So, I'm pretty much hoping that, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping for a miracle here. Uh, the best thing I can think to do is to sack Ice Chips. It's the only thing I can do, because after I can survive one re-entry, and he's not going to get a lot of HP, but he actually goes for Earthquake, which is great, because this is when, this is when I realize I'm still in the match. He's about to take 18%. He has to mock punch me on the next turn, or I can freeze dry him within range. He's within range of a possible freeze dry high roll. On top of that, I have a chance to actually, um, I have an actual chance of uh, putting this thing definitely within poison range. And now it becomes, can they, can Latios beat my lot my jirachi so it becomes a huge huge pain but i see a window of opportunity and i'm about to take it i hate to do it but it's gonna be a semi-stall tactic of toxicking and waiting for these things to die it's the only thing i've got left because i just lost every single piece to the puzzle ice chips i'm about to lose so the only things i have left are my two walls and wish and protect and dragon tail knockoff and toxic those are the only things i have left so i have to play to what i have left and as it comes down this is what i have left so um so here i'm i'm pretty sure he's gonna mock punch me i don't see why he wouldn't he's definitely within range so he definitely does mock punch me but now he's gonna take 24 percent so here, here's where we start getting into some, some stuff. So I bring in Luma. I'm going to protect this turn because I'm going to get my HP back and I'm going to stall it's toxic. Now, here's the thing. This is when the match slows down. 
Now, when I say slows down, this point in the match is where he timer stalls me. He knows he can't beat me at this point. This thing is dead next turn if he leaves it in. So he has to switch it out. He cannot beat my Jirachi 1v1 with his Latios. He can't do it. This Conkeldur dies if he leaves it in. That's his biggest counter to half my to the two mons I have left. He does have the Earth Power and Scald on the the Gastrodon, but I have revealed Toxic. So if I Toxic it and I knock off and I switch out and I knock off, he has no recovery and he's gonna rack up Toxic damage. So yes, I'm stalling by using Wish and Protect and Toxic but it's the only option I've now been left with to use in order to bring this match back. I have everything here. Yes, you see there are four mons, but I'm not counting Porygon because Porygon dies to rocks on re-entry. So Porygon's pretty much dead if he switches it in. But this is the thing. At that amount of HP, I am uncertain if Conkeldur can even come back in because it is so low, I think it dies to rocks on the next turn. Though in the end, I did find out he actually did have enough HP to come back in, but he would have died to Toxic if he did switch it in on something, so. But, this is where he timer stalls me. And this is where the match, like I said, it slows down. And at the point that we're going, you know, 60 turns, we're going back and forth and we're taking 15, 20, maybe 30 seconds because, you know, maybe I have to take a minute to, you know, I have to take 30, 35 seconds to figure out what I'm going to do because, you know, you know, ever since the freeze, I've been, I've been, I've been on the back foot because I don't have anything. But ever since the earthquake, I gained a lot of momentum because he didn't get any HP back. He didn't get enough to really do anything. He wouldn't have got enough anyways, but I would have been able to, you know, had he gone for drain punches, he probably would have won this, but it would have been a very, very mild, narrow victory. It would have been a very narrow victory. Maybe a 3-0 if he goes into like Latios and just takes out uh, Luma, or not Luma, but um, if he takes out what's his name, but then he'd have to take a Dragon Tail. And if he takes Dragon Tail, he, I put him definitely within a range of rocks. At this point but um, at this point this is where he pretty much starts timer stalling me for the last 12 minutes of the match so here I'm just gonna go for the protect uh, I need to keep my HP pool I want this thing to die he does bring the Latios in which is good because it takes rocks so here I know I'm at a right amount of HP I can survive it's time to wish myself back up because I need to wish myself back up and at this point in the match I am Oh, as you see, high rolls there. So at this point in the match, after seeing that, I am, I am saying to myself 100%ly, he is a modest Latios. I don't know that he's not a modest Latios. I just see the damage he's doing and assume that he is a full modest Latios. So here, I'm wish protecting. I'm putting myself back up. I am gonna wish protect again because I, I, you know, I can't take two shadow balls in a row. Especially if he gets a spadef drop, I'm screwed. So I have to keep wish protecting and hope that he doesn't get a spadef drop. So I wish again. Like I said, this slowed down, so each one of these turns takes a minute almost because he is stalling me out for so much time. And I'm doing what I can to just even stay in this match. I understand stall is a kind of a D tactic, but it's the only thing I have left. I've tried to overpower him and I've lost everything along the way. So it's the only thing I have left. So here I go for Toxic, and luckily enough, that Shadow Ball didn't do a lot. I think it actually minimum rolled. So uh, I'm lucky here. I'm right out of range of, I'm out of range of everything that everything that could put me here. But I still, just to, just to play it safe, I think I go for the Protect here, just to put myself in a position to where, um, I think I Protect here. Do I Protect? Yeah, I do Protect, just to guarantee that my that I live because last time I got put within real close range, but now that I'm out of range of that Shadow Ball, barring a Shadow Ball crit, uh, he switches it back in, which is fine by me because he's gonna take another 12%, but he sacks off the Porygon 2 to reset the damage on Toxic. He's just kind of going for the Shadow Ball. He cannot break my Jirachi, which is great for me. So I'm gonna Wish Protect and I am going to Toxic stall this out. Remember, we're still being timer stalled at this point. There's nothing really I can I can do. So here he goes into Gastrodon. Uh, when he goes into this Gastrodon, those like seven turns ate off like a good eight, nine minutes off the clock. 
and there was only 12 minutes left. There was only like, there was only like 10, like 10, 11 minutes left. So here, there's not much I can do. I know the earth power is coming, so I have to make a bold move. It's like, yeah, if I had like an extra 20 minutes, I could stall this out and he could timer stall me all he wants. And I would toxic and just stall out and I would go for it. And he would timer stall all he wants, but he would eventually lose. So I, uh, with like two minutes left, I have no, I have to take the offensive and I have to go offensive and I have to go into Tootsie Pop because if I can get a Dragon Tail hit, that thing is out and something is coming in to die. Whether it be Latios or Conkelder, it's the only thing he has left. One of those two comes in and dies. And now at this point, I am still assuming that the Conkelder dies upon re-entry. But basically, I, I Dragon Tail out, kill something take damage in the process because I'm going to have to take damage but his earth powers only do 25 only do about 26 percent at max so they only do 24 percent so I switch out I'm like you know I can eat one wish up the next turn and dragon tail and get this match to a 2-2 and I will have the HP advantage because one of his mods is so hard but he gets a crit here and that that actually presents a problem because that crit put me in range of being killed by the next one and at this point I, there's only like a minute 30 seconds left on the clock so I have to make the adjustment to it um there's still like a minute 30 or two minutes left oh no no it was a minute 30 left so at this point by the time this came in I had to switch in Jirachi and there's only like I think 70 80 seconds left uh when I get hit by this earth power and it does a lot of damage but I would survive it after another uh, leftover recovery. But here, he's already timer stalled me for 10 minutes. He's guaranteed this match. He's guaranteed it now because there's only 60 seconds left on the clock. And he's timer stalled me for so long that I the match is now literally unwinnable. Because he has made it unwinnable. So... Uh, here I decide, you know what, if we're going to get timer stalled, I'm going to timer stall him and I'm going to timer stall out the last 30 seconds to get it down to zero and I'm going to hit protect and I'm going to secure the, the differential. So I timer stalled for 30 seconds at the end just to guarantee that we don't lose differential. So, um, so with that, I just protect I'm guaranteeing my differential loss at a negative one, so I am finally taking a minus one because I'd rather take a minus one than a three than a three zero. Uh, here, I think the timer had just counted down to zero as that, as that leftovers came out, and then the battle ends. So there's not much else I can really do about that because of everything. So I'm just gonna pause the video right here. Uh, so we end up losing week one. Now, when it comes down to it. Um, I truly believe we could have won this match. Uh, the biggest mistake I made was sacking Charizard very, very early in the match. So uh, if I had had Charizard late in the match, he would have definitely had a role to play. But it is what it is. I can't, I can't go back. You know, I had to make do with what I had. Um, yeah. So um, I truly believe we could have won the stall war, and. In, in this, he said, uh, afterwards, I, you know, because at about 12 minutes, I, I realized, like, we're going, because we were going pretty quick with the turns, and then all of a sudden, he's taking 55 to 70 seconds to make a to make a turn, and at that point, I sent him a message on Skype, said, please don't timer stall me, and the match eventually ends, and he goes, uh, he sends me a message back, he's basically just like, uh, he basically just says, hey, you know, I had to, you know, I had to, he's like, I'm sorry, you know, I had to, I had to timer stall, I don't like doing it, but uh, I think stall is worse than timer, is is worse than timer stalling, and to a point he's right, I, but I think at the point of the match when I had to stall was only because I had nothing left. As you saw, I had my switch-ins, I was doing my switch-ins, I was trying to get him, the freeze set me back so hard. Um, as soon as by sharp went down the tick would have had uh, you know if the tick was at full HP he would have had a really uh, I could have maybe double hammer armed that um, the the <clears throat> the gastrodon I could have maybe gone for the double hammer arm on the gastrodon uh, especially at like plus one or something that would have been nice but it is what it is I mean I am I think I'm just, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that my opponent had had to resort to timer stalling in order to secure a victory. I understand what, it, I understand that 
it's you know when you want to win you want to win but I think it just looks really bad if you can't win in any other way he still had the Kunk Helder he still had the Latios the thing is, is he couldn't break my walls he couldn't break it so his his result his result was having to timer stall in order to secure the victory and in the end, I I sent you know I sent a message to the admins. I was like, hey, you know, what is the actual official rule on timer stalling? And even they told me it's an it's an official strategy. So as it is, I'm taking a loss only because my opponent couldn't break me. There's nothing more to say than that. There's you know my opponent couldn't break me, and even though he believes he could take my Jirachi one v one, I've done the calcs with his with his sets. He's he sent me his sets, and he I've done the calcs. Barring a spadef drop or a crit, he can't kill Jirachi before Toxic takes him. He can't. I can actually stall out the Toxic to kill his to kill his Gastrodon before that happens. Or I can switch in Tootsie Pop and then eat another eat another protect. I mean it really just comes down to that. Or, you know, I switch in Tootsie Pop, eat the attack, go for a knockoff. Knockoff now puts him definitely within range of a, you know, maybe a fourth or fifth poison. And now he has no leftovers recovery. And so he doesn't get the 6%. So every time he takes toxic damage, he gets to the point where there's not much else he can have. And he, if I've got Lick Licky Low and he brings the he brings in the the Conkelder, I if I can't protect, I just sack off the sack off Lick Lick Licky at no health. That way he gets nothing back and he just has to eat toxics. He just eats, you know, he eats the toxic damage, which is, you know, nothing he can really do about that. So it is, it is what it is. So, um, I, I understand this is a very long video and I'm sorry, but I, I think I'm just, I'm just disappointed. I'm not disappointed in my team. My team did exactly what I wanted. I'm disappointed with how the match ended and especially having to be timer stalled out of it. Um, I mean, this is, it is, it's Pokemon, you know, crits and freeze has happened. And, you know, I understand I have a hacks team. So when hacks happens to me, I don't feel bad about it. I was just like, okay, he got a freeze. I knew it could happen. I knew it could happen. It's a 10% possibility of happening. Yeah. But I was, you know, I was taking the safe route and I was making sure my HP was at the right level to kill it and take on the rest of the team. And he gets the freeze at a perfect moment. There's nothing to say than that. That's just bad timing. And it's not that... It's not that I felt I couldn't beat him. I made one big mistake with losing Charizard. If Charizard had been there in the end, this would have been a completely different game. Had Evangelion's not been frozen, this would have changed everything because I would have killed half the things he had on his team. He would have had to bring in the Bi Sharp and chance the chance the He would have had to bring in the Bi Sharp and chance the um uh what is it? He would have had the chance to speed tie. So looking at it, I actually have his set right here. So Bi Sharp would not have outsped me. He would not have outsped me. So looking at it, he only has 180 in speed because I have a set right here in front of me. As it is, he would not have outsped me. So I could have actually outsped him and killed even that because even leaving it in, I probably would have gone for it. I might have just said, you know what? If I lose it, I don't really lose anything else other than that. I still have, I still have my two walls. I still have ice chips to take on the Latios, the Latios, and I still have other, I still have, um, you know, I still have something, you know, I can still have the tick. I still have the tick. The tick is still around. So, I mean, I probably would have left it in. And at that point, if I leave it in and kill it, then I'm in, I'm in great shape. I kill it because the only thing left he has to take it is Latios. And if I'm at full HP, Latios doesn't kill me with a Thunderbolt. It can't. It only does 89% max, 90% at most, barring a crit. A crit kills me outright, but I mean, if he gets the crit, he deserves to win at that point. But I mean, like I said, it's, it's, it's just, you know, going back and watching the video, it's just, it's hard to, it's hard to accept that you lose when you know you didn't lose. I mean, had I'd had 15 more minutes, 10 more minutes, if I'd had even 10 more minutes, this battle would have ended all sorts of differently. I would never have made the aggressive switch into, um, into Lick Licky because I would have been like, I got 10 minutes left. You know, I don't have to take that chance of switching and taking an earth power because I don't have to take that chance. I don't have to do that. I, I mean, I can easily outlive it. 
I don't, I mean, I can just toxic and then just outlive because he only does 39% on an earth tower, barring a crit. But I mean, I could have gone 1v1 with him. And even if he does get me, I have the toxic on it. It's racking up damage. I can literally just dragon tail or I can knock off and put it within range and then dragon tail it out. Like have it go for an attack, dragon tail it, bring in Conkelder. Conkelder gets hit, takes the toxic, dies. He now has to switch in two mons. And if he switches and has enough to deal with, um, if he has enough to do, um, if, if I'm low and he has enough to HP to survive the re-entry, and the next thing, a toxic. Then I ta then I protect. I wait for the toxic to take him down to put him in range of knockoff. Knockoff kills, and then Latios comes in and enters, and dies to rocks, and I win. I win. So, um, I'm sorry this video is so long. It's just, it's, it's just. There's a lot on my mind about it, just the way it went down. So, um, to me, I don't feel I lost. I don't think I lost. Um, congratulations to my opponent. I mean, you, you had to play the way you did to win. I guess I, I don't really knock you for that. Um, I mean, having to do what you have to do to win is the way it goes. Um, but if you say that I that my stall was worse than your, than your timer stall, I think you're wrong. Because I only went for protect and wish stalls when I had nothing left to go for. So as it is, you can, you can say what you want, but you couldn't break my walls. You couldn't do it. You got lucky with a freeze. And you got lucky with some other... Yeah, I mean, you got lucky with a freeze and you got lucky with, with one stupid play I made. Other than that, you stalled me out of time. And that was it. So, as it is, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if it sounds like I'm a little upset or anything, then that's just the way that it is. Um, like I said, it's just kind of a, kind of a dumb way to lose, but... It is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I will see you in the next video when we take on our next opponent, which I don't even know who we're playing. I don't even care who we're playing at this point. Um, I'm playing somebody. I think it's I think it's Golden State or something. I, I don't even know. I don't even care at this point. So um, I'll bring in, you know, we'll try again and hopefully we don't get, uh, hopefully we just don't get timer stalled out again and we don't get the amount of D that we got here. So. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have yourselves a great night, alright?